So my talk is about Memo Mobile. Um, my name is Josef Mlich. I live in Kuzim, which is near to Brno in Czech Republic. Um, you can follow me on social networks, on GitHub. I publish uh, blog posts about Nemo, which are consequently published on the net website of the of the project. Uh, so, uh, what I want to talk about, I want to talk about devices and its current status. I have some some discussion um, around uh, Nemo Mobile and its relationship to other projects such as Sailfish OS, Mer Project, and Manjaro. Uh, I have some some outlook to the future, and uh, yeah, and I have some tutorial how to start with Nemo uh, to use it. And uh, what was that? Uh, and uh, how you can contribute to project. Um, um, let's let's take a brief look on on the on my device. So it's it's fine for Braveheart. It's uh, uh, the system is switched to Czech language. I'm not sure if you can see the, the letters because the camera quality is poor. Um, but the user interface is pretty simple and pretty similar to uh, Sailfish OS. Uh, we have some basic applications uh, which work so so the the Nemo Mobile boots to to UI uh, and uh, shows something. So you can do some some configuration and it will do something. Uh, not always the right thing, but you know uh, the status is, I would say, still alpha version, maybe beta version. Many things doesn't work. Uh, for me, the the GSM stack doesn't work. Um, maybe I should go to next slide. What 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 does work and what doesn't? Wi-Fi does work. Uh, UI the on-screen keyboard. Uh, uh the the status of of the project could be explained by by the statement the power button has work uh, is working so um you can turn off the device using power button which wasn't possible like three months ago <laughs> and right now you can you can hold the the power button and you can see the the dialogue to turn off the device uh, USB networking doesn't work right now, but it was working, or it it, it is working, I guess, in in the release 0 0.6, which is the, the current version, and uh, uh, it is not working right now. Uh, terminal does work, but we are using the. Uh, Finger term project, which which comes from from uh, Selfish OS, uh, and uh, in the recent version, uh, Sergey uh, changed the support of sizing. So so the the user interface lipsticks should work uh, with uh, various resolutions with uh, various dimensions of of screen. Uh, but after that change, the terminal is broken. Um, like uh, it, it is working, but the, the resolution is not that you you would like to use. So it looks really strange, and it it needs a lot of laugh, as as you can see. You can install packages using Pacman. Uh, for example, I have installed. The megapixels application there. Okay, let's see if there is something. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the Tux is there. 
So you can you can take pictures using the megapixels application from Marin Bram. So the so the GTK application does work as well. Uh, um, but many things are broken. For me personally, GSM stack doesn't work. Uh, it stops on uh, registration to network. Uh, so the the often CTL list says denied, and I don't know why, and I don't know what I can do. Uh, I have uh, made some some lock. Uh, and I have attached some some details about about modem firmware. I have even updated modem firmware, um, but I don't know. Maybe it is because I have the Braveheart edition, not not the uh, not the, the released one. Some people reported the it does work correctly. Even I did phone call with uh, Ubuntu Touch, but without sound. But it was I don't know four months ago, so maybe it's or maybe maybe more. So it is probably better in in want to touch. Uh, let's make a little step back. Uh, so if you want to try it, you can use VirtualBox or KVM as I'm using. Uh, uh, from native devices, we support. Uh, PinePhone, so I'm testing it on, on PinePhone Braveheart. Uh, we built images for PineType. Uh, actually, I have added recently some patches to be able to, to create images uh, to, to Manjaro ARM tools. Uh, so it, it compiles, but I wasn't able to uh, I wasn't able to uh, test it because I don't have device. Uh, then a sort of supported Volaphone. So Luca shown that it does work. Uh, so he had presentation on the Vola developer days or something. We have we have uh, recording of that presentation of, of on our web page. Uh, but I don't know how he installed the the system on Vola, so there isn't any native installer. Regarding to Vola, uh, yeah, Martin, uh, that's uh, answer on your question. Vola phone is using libhybris, uh, but uh, beside of this, I I I hope I guess I, I'm not sure, but I think it is using the native native API. So, so a lib hybrid it is not needed. At least PinePhone, it is not compiled with lib hybrid uh, or PinePhone version. It's not installed uh, because I am not able to to compile it on my environment. On my environment, sorry, my English is terrible and the lung uh, is like. Uh, okay, doesn't matter. Um, probably you can try it with other uh, other devices as base we are using manjaro so uh, if you look into manjaro arm tools there are some profiles for example raspberry pi 4 raspberry pi 3 uh, so it is probably possible to compile it but we don't do the images for that uh, you can try to port it to your device i hope uh, the support for uh, Volaphone or <laughs> the Gigaset GS290 uh, is, is basically the same device that that one with the um, hole for camera on the, on the uh, front screen. Uh, I hope the support will be uh, better. So so some some images and some instruction to install will be there. I hope. Uh, with that, should be a should be uh, possible to port it to any Android device which is supported by LibHybris, I guess. But it is still something to do. Uh, so, 
Uh, the history of the of the Nemo Mobile is uh, uh, is uh, based on the Sailfish OS. So big part of development was was done by Yola people, uh, and the project is very old. I would say it it have about ten years or maybe even more. Uh, I have here device the, the Nokia N950 uh, with the uh, old version of the uh, Nemo Mobile, but it's not possible to install it on the Nokia N950 anymore. Uh, but yeah, there were some some issues with the uh, with the drivers with the uh, um, graphical card probably so it wasn't accelerated and it was flickering somehow or something uh we are moving from from sailfish os because uh they were staying at the uh, qt56 um and uh, we are trying to adopt uh modern uh linux technologies and we are migrating to to those so we want to reuse part of uh, KDE frameworks, or uh, and uh, yeah, and the main thing, the Nemo Mobile is fully open source, so you can compile everything from scratch, and you can fix bugs in all components, not just the, the open source one, because ev every component is open source. Uh, the the support of the uh, Android applications is there, so I, I already tried to run Vaidroid. It was running, at least, but the performance was poor, and I guess it's similar on the other other distribution. Maybe it's more polished somewhere, but uh, it is way to go, at least. Uh, I also tried Flatpak, which also works. Uh, from my point of view, this flatpak very promising way to ship packages to to mobile devices. So, uh, in the flatpak, the keyboard, the on-screen keyboard doesn't work. It needs some laugh. But uh, you know, the if if you open the web browser, which is a very simple, Qt based. Uh, Oh, it's nothing there. Then you can see the keyboard is somehow broken. <laughs> so the half of screen is not used, but the yeah, it's broken. <laughs> um, we are using uh, Qt WebKit, uh, so it works quite good. But many people want Gecko um because you know webkit is based on on, on chrome and uh, um many people people are afraid of spying from google even even in that way oh i don't have probably the the uh, internet connection uh well i'm i'm not at home i'm at office <laughs> because of children um Let's continue a little bit. So the the Mare project had old Qt. Now we can compile uh, things with Qt 5.15. Uh, there are many Mare specific libraries and patches we have, uh, and we want to get rid of them. So, for example, uh, the Sailfish OS recently, yeah, uh, uh, Sailfish OS recently uh, introduced some 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 sail jail sandboxing of applications, and uh, we don't like it somehow. So we would prefer to use Selenox and other things which are native for Linux. I can see some some comment about snap yeah i don't like snap sorry 
it's it's working only only on Ubuntu or not only but and I'm Fedora guy. Um, uh, yeah, we are pushing our changes back to to Sailfish. We are pushing our our patches back to other uh, projects we are using and they are merging it which is great so so if it's something just nemo specific there is some if def statement and uh, um, uh, it's usually smart small parts that we disable just just part and we are able to compile it or we adjust parts according file system hierarchy standard or something uh, So we are moving to Manjaro, and actually I'm not sure why the first step was to Fedora because the the Nemo was RPM based distribution. Uh, but um, I really don't know what what was the reason to switch to Manjaro. Probably it is because um, uh, Manjaro is shipping some native kernel for PinePhone, and uh, they are trying to support uh, support uh, PinePhone in the uh, main project. And in Fedora, it is some kind of side project. Uh, beside of this, we are using Conman. Uh, we are using Ofono instead of Modern Manager, uh, or like. It was always using Ofono uh, and uh, Fedora, if I remember correctly, is using Modern Manager. Uh, yeah, we are. Uh, we have added our patches to to Manjaro ARM tools and uh, our recipes, or let's say, like there is there is something. Uh, some some file with list of packages which are necessary to build uh, with Manjaro to build the the Nemo. So we provided that, and uh, uh, yeah, we are using standard Manjaro infrastructure for that. But we have a, around 100 packages outside of Manjaro infrastructure, uh, mainly because it is changing too fast and uh, uh, it needs a manual interaction which uh, we, we don't have permission for that uh, so what what is what, what we plan to do next uh, somehow naturally and missing in the list is the uh, we want to make it work. So we would like to have working phone. We would like to uh, send text messages, like the SMS messages. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't understand the question about shared objects. Um, it's maybe my my context is is it's is on next slide so we would like to migrate to qt quick controls too uh we have we was considering uh work with uh kirigami framework but yes some we, we have our native components and it have own look and feel so we would like to probably stay at, at, at those um yeah and uh Sergey uh, Chupligin, who is the the main developer of of the Nemo, uh, he wants to uh, have multi window support and multi screen support. So he he is working on that. By the way, on the screenshot you can see all the controls, all the components we have in our Qt control set. Uh, uh which is screenshot from our website um 
Yeah, and um, you can see another question in chat. <laughs> Okay, it's it's not the question; it's statement. Uh, uh, so I would like to tell you how to start with with Nemo. Uh, we have quite nice tutorials on our website. We have like basic uh, explanations of of things. So maybe I can share the screen. Uh, Okay, I'm not sure if I'm able to do that. So if you look on our website, um, then you can see um, some news, some blog posts, uh, and here is some, some installation instructions. So it, it is really easy. You just grab the image uh, from, the, from the server, then you extract it to, to SD card as you would expect. Um, there is more complicated tutorial how to install it into VirtualBox. So basically you will install x86 version and uh, you will add our repository and you will install all packages from our repository and then you can run Lipstick. Um, that's the, the, the first step. Then you probably want to try our SDK, which is which is basically uh, the the virtual machine with our packages. You should install some other packages, and then you should start with a packaging repository, which is our custom repository with with Pokago builds. Uh, the the Pokago build is uh, basically same as spec file in the Fedora or RPM based distribution. So, so when I take, for example, browser, then the Pokoko build is bash script to compile it. So you can see some CMake command and make install command. Uh, and this makes the package. So, so the way how to start is to find uh, the package you want to tune up where the, where the issue is. Then you can find the, the Pokago build, the receipt, how to build it. So for example, settings application, and you will see, uh, this is a little bit uh, uh, cryptography, I would say, because you have to um, substitute the, the value of variable. So it's GitHub slash Nemo Mobile UX slash Glacier, Glacier settings. And, uh, then then you can see how to compile the application manually uh, and you can you can submit patches so this is quite easy if you clone the repository you can compile the the manjaro or arc patch package using such command so this command will will create uh, some truth and uh, compiles the ARC package, the, the ARM for, for ARM platform. And uh, you can install that, that package. Uh, well, you should update also the, the configuration file uh, and add our repository to be able to download dependencies. And uh, this command creates the, your own repository. When you have packages, you can build the image uh, and you can flash whole image if you want. Oof, there are a lot of questions. I will I will return to the to the questions later. Sorry. <laughs> uh, if you want to contribute, uh, we have like a list of things we would like to see. Uh, we have Telegram group, we have metrics group, and uh, uh, the people there are very kind and responsive. Uh, 
we need to improve documentation. Maybe you've seen uh, that my English is poor, <laughs> and I will be happy if you if you submit patch uh, for for documentation. So just just fork the repository and uh, make pull request on GitHub. Uh, yeah. Speaking about code, I already shown the the installation as an SDK. You probably need to know the, that uh, the compositor is is Lipstick. Uh, the main application is is Glacier Home. Uh, if you if you want to uh, change the basic uh, components like buttons, etc., it's Qt Quick Controls components and uh, the application must be found inside of the packages repository. Probably uh, you have to track it a little bit at least. Uh, if the problem is inside of Manjaro, you should uh, submit that directly to Manjaro. We have um, pretty nice uh, integration with uh, with Transifex. Uh, so it is like easiest way how to contribute the project, how, how to get familiar with with the project. Uh, the check translations are done obviously because I'm doing that, and I, I have I have made the setup. We have very good Russian translation because Sergey Chupligin is the the main developer is from Russia, and we have also other languages but not so good. So the, the the good translated are Polish. Uh, I think uh, there is work in progress on German language, and uh, French. French is also in in progress. Um, so we we would like to have Nemo Mobile like uh, very nice. So we we like I can be. And if you are not programmer, uh, but you can mock up components, you can mock up things in the uh, graphical editor, we will be happy for for any suggestion how should Nemo look like, how, sh oh, sorry, uh, I was trying to show you the, the block. So there, there were such, uh, such mock-ups of the components and many of, of those were actually implemented. Uh, for sure, we are very small team, and we are doing that in free time. So anyone who will test it on his device, uh, test his own scenarios, uh, can report it back, and we will be happy for that. Um, yeah, infrastructures. Yeah, that's that's quite complicated so it would be nice to have some better continuous integration but someone have to do that if you make some noise about the nemo mobile i will be happy if you if you try it if you make some blog post or something uh we can you can publish the blog post on our website um where i've been let's go back to presentation Yeah, and you can donate money, but uh, or you can send us devices for sure. Uh, but you know we are doing that in free time, and uh, I'm afraid I'm not able to like, uh, fully test a whole uh, bunch of devices. I would like to try the Pine Tap because uh, it's uh, interesting for me. But if you if you provide something else, you should probably provide some su support yourself. Um, yeah, you should you can contribute with uh, contribute with a code. Yeah, that's the thing I wanted to show. Actually, uh, so on the website, I'm trying to publish uh, monthly updates of the project, and on the End of the blog post is always some some um, not here. Sorry, <laughs> I'm trying to to uh, publish some some uh, interesting kind of bug. Uh, 
like uh, uh, something which which could be uh, fixed and yeah I, I I've seen that recently um, so you can also start with those kind of back bugs uh, so if you want to contribute with code you should like build a package compile it and make pull requests so this screenshot is uh, from our hardware test application so uh, yeah I, I have created some application to test test uh, the the interfaces the various interfaces like uh, mostly qt sensors to see if the hardware works because the qt sensor is, is sensor is going to sensor framework and uh, 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 there is some kind of configuration then you need the right driver and uh, it could be broke broken very easily and if when you have application to to test it you can you can find out quickly which part is wrong and maybe you can find solution uh, okay questions i should go through the list there are a lot of questions if you if you want your priority then then please unmute yourself and tell the tell the opinion <laughs> uh i was probably too quick uh and i have to find what question was already answered um Yeah, the the flat packs are complicated, and um, yeah, it is question if it's the right way to go. But uh, but I think we can we can use it to bring some more applications. And of course, I I like the idea uh, the idea of having uh, like more more applications like in one. Uh, one step so the flat pack support should should bring a lot, lot of things next i like the the way the the applications on the flat pack side is are are um, shown to users so it's some kind of, of store basically if you if you look into package repositories using pacman then then you have tons of packages uh by the way the one of the things which was done recently is uh, update of package manager so i think it should be possible to install packages from ui in near future but i didn't try it yet i wasn't brave enough uh yeah the actually uh, might i'm sorry sorry yeah i have a question uh, no you afraid of um, it, there is a lot of discussion about Qt and testing model aren't you afraid of uh, some uh, some changes that will come I, I think the last controversial move was they uh, closed the PS uh, repositories what, what you think about that yeah this one is scary um, well um, I think the Qt will be open source for all the time so there is some kind of uh, um i don't know <laughs> uh so so uh, the community can release whole qt in, on on gpl license uh and uh it will be there i hope but yes it's 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 right that qt could be closed i'm i'm afraid more than about qt i'm afraid about um, speed of development of, of linux so so as i can see the whole nemo mobile is uh, 
stocks five years ago or something like that. So right now we have QT 5.15, which is not so old, but current version of QT is 6.2, I think, or maybe 6.3, which have some different um, or it's breaking up API. So, so the port will be probably more complicated especially because qt controls one which are deprecated and uh, yeah i'm afraid that it's, this is just fun project because we are just two people uh mm, so i just at some like background information about like the Nemo Nemo project, like can you hear me? Is it possible to hear yeah, me? Yes. So yes, basically, like, this is the as I understand it, like this is the current like incarnation of the Nemo project. But originally in like 2013, like basically it was the before Sailfish OS there was a Nemo project, and a lot of people from Iola worked on it, and it kind of worked like uh, Fedora works with RHEL, like they were working on stuff on in the in the open. And there was the expectation that they will regularly like cut releases from the Nemo project and do like Sailfish OS releases. Then they basically had to like change the hardware and kind of didn't have time to, for proper upstream open collaboration with the community. And the Nemo project like ended up with like just a few community members taking care of it and Sailfish OS being developed like not fully open. And like that, that was the first incarnation of Nemo project as I know it. And like this new refresh is kind of like Nemo project too, I would say. That's how I see it personally. Yes, yes. yes. But um, I would say we are still using the Sailfish or Yola made components, uh, which are still developed in public. So there is big repository, uh, GitHub slash Sailfish, and uh, or maybe it's GitHub slash Sailfish OS. Uh, they probably published all the the open source components they have uh, but we we decided to move different direction and basically i didn't i haven't done that that decision i i came to project and and started with that because i had the device to try it and uh, i always I, I always liked the project uh i can see the question about glacier so glacier is the the name of the the components demo is distribution glacier are components i usually uh yeah and, and it's it's a replacement for sailfish os silica yeah that's that's right uh i can see question about builds on on uh, uh, uh arm 64 servers uh well personally i do my builds in on my laptop in in Quemu in in KVM, and uh, I publish those packages on my server. Sergey does does the same, but on the official server. Uh, we have also a Manjaro repository or Manjaro group, uh, and most of packages are there. Manjaro provides continuous integration, so if we uh, commit a new change into the repository the continuous integration start and it builds the package uh on the arm machine i i think on on the arm 64 machine uh, i i'm i'm not sure which devices they have in their ci but the trouble is that uh the package is attached as artifact in the gitlab and you have to download it and if there is some dependency, you have to you have to add the the package manually to the repository. And I don't have permission for that. Sergey don't have permission either. There is a guy from Manjaro who collaborates with us, but uh, he is uh, a little bit overloaded with that, so he uh, don't have time to to add all dependencies all the time um not sure if, if it's the answer for for a question yeah we, I, it, it would be possible to build it natively i guess 
Uh, I even bought uh, uh, Raspberry Pi 4 with ARM, uh, the, the, the 64 bit ARM, but uh, yeah, I have other other usage for that. So maybe that this is this is one point to to contribute. So you can you can buy us some Raspberry Pi uh, with 64 bit, and I will set up the the continuous integration there probably. Uh, this is just a statement about, about Qt and KDE company. KDE company. Uh, yeah, this is basically like the safety mechanism. Uh, as I understand it, like Qt is of course uh, available over the GPL, but yes. like if the Qt company does not release uh, new Qt version in like uh, six months or a year or something like that, automatically the existing code will be relicensed under B B uh, the uh, Berkeley software license, basically, like the really permissive one, which basically like kills the Qt company or something like that. Because they won't be ever able to sell again like the dual licensed version they where they actually make their money. Yeah. Uh... So I can see question from from Andre Colin. So we you are stuck on specific kernel branch. Um, yes, probably. But this is this is uh, something. What is problem of Manjaro? So we are just using kernel for Manjaro, and they are bringing new patches to that. So, uh, but but yes, they they have own branch, and they are using uh, patches from from Andre. Uh, Maggie Yerman, who who is who is making the kernel for Pine Phone. Uh, yes, David, I I I seen some link to to the Oracle Cloud. Uh, I had no time to to look on it yet, but it's probably one one of options. Uh, and I'm not familiar with uh, uh, those those automation tool you you sub, uh, you suggested to make the setup because if I remember correctly, you said that the instance is flushed every every month or something like that. Uh, Like it should not be that problematic. Like you can, if you can, like automate the deployment, you should be able to like just re-image it in like half an hour. Yes, yes, probably. Uh, yes, this is like everything for my slides. I can show you a little bit from from development, maybe. Um, we have. Uh, We have like one minute to go, and after that should be questions. So, so I can little I can show a little bit of that. So I have like x86 version of Manjaro here. Uh, okay, and let's see if it starts. Uh, takes more time than usual or I can show a little bit more of the operating system but um, yeah the, the calculator is working as as you would expect oh I triggered reboots for some reason <laughs> oh it started okay so I usually start the terminal and from terminal I run lipstick uh, to see whole user interface, there were some issue with MC daemon, which um, says that the screen is turned off, and and uh, yeah, when when screen is turned off, everything is <laughs> is disabled. But uh, you can separately run the um, the packages 
or, or the, the application of, of Glacier. Uh, for example, I don't know, Glacier settings is the big one. Uh, so as you can see, it's translated to check. Maybe I can run it in English. And uh, yeah, it it is uh, like the the layout is adapted to to landscape mode. Uh, you can see like Wi-Fi plugin, but the issue is I don't have Wi-Fi in my virtual machine, and I'm not sure if the con man would work correctly. There is some uh geo clue support so you can have your position even if you don't have uh, gps from from geo ip um there is uh, uh like mobile networks dialogue that text that i don't have any sim cards uh and if i put sim card in I don't have it inside usually, then uh, uh, it says denied or the, the, the network says denied. So, uh, but I have here and maybe someone, someone help, uh, can help with that. I have here the Osmo, Osmo Com BB uh, SIM card sniper. Um, I'm currently waiting for, uh, uh, the right size of the cable because it's micro sim or and uh, and uh, um, hopefully I can debug it or or at uh, get some data which can say what is the issue actually uh, yeah. Most recently, device, device lock was reworked somehow. I don't have current version here. I was working on the fixes with Glacier Gallery. The, the issue was that uh, there was some Qt dog gallery component, which was, uh, uh, which was um, uh, binded with Tracker 2, which is obsolete. And uh, but Yola Yola did a new branch for Tracker Three. It's actually already in the newest version, which was released. Or early adopters can have it since last week, but I'm not sure if it's publicly available for for everyone so far. But they migrated to to Tracker Three, and we are using their work. Uh, and. Uh, yeah, it can show you the images uh, as, as you would expect. Um, there is a Glacier Components uh, application, which is packaged in examples, and the, the component contain all the, the controls. Uh, so you can see how the, uh, the, the API looks like. So there is, uh, or the, the components look like. So there is the feature press and hold on those those list view items, which shows you those those actions, which is used some time. Uh, I have done recently some, some patch to file manager, which allows you to enter the, the address, the directory, so you can escape from your home folder. Uh, um yeah and that's it so yeah there are some more questions again uh no it's about the the the, the ampera a1 instances great Uh, so when I want to to compile something, I have the Nemo packaging repository here, and uh, 
the Nemo packaging repository contain all the files. So when I want to recompile, for example, browser, I remove all the previous assets. Okay, Chmot. Uh, by the way, I have here, oh, I have some Docker file to to do it anywhere, but the the Docker with Manjaro uh, was working only with uh, x86, but it does it wasn't working for ARM for some reason. So the 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 binaries had some issues. So it was for some strange reason it was compiled against the host glibc. Uh, it, it was trying to link the, the things again, the host glibc and its functions. So it wasn't uh, the, the good thing to compile. And I wasn't able to, to uh, solve that. So when I want to compile that, I enter the directory called make go, which is run under a regular user. It will compile the package for me. which takes some time. And uh, I, I expect it less than, than this. And I'm, I'm compiling that for x86. So uh, the ARM build is, I don't know, maybe, 10 times slower sometimes, depends on package. So some packages uh, are compiled in 30 minutes for ARM. Uh, so the continuous integration on my, on my computer takes around uh, 12 hours of run to recompile all, all packages. So after compilation, I can see there are sources of the, of the package cloned uh, and there is a package I can install it by pacman-u uh, uppercase glacier browser as a root and then I can run it and I can see the result so so most most of things could be uh, or many of things could be debugged on the desktop even even uh, without uh, need of uh, even without need of uh, uh, device. Uh, right now, I did compilation in x86, but when I want to recompile it with uh, with ARM, I run build ARM package um, keep name of directory so glacier browser i need to do it with sudo this will create truth and in the truth is called quemu and uh, it is compiled in quemu to to arm package um yeah the truth i, I have here some script to to update it so uh, I I'm adding some custom repository to to the truth actually, and I'm calling the repo add um, to to recompile a list of packages to be able to download them. Uh, yes, and the, when I compile all the packages, like this is the list of all the packages in order that they can be compiled so because there are dependencies uh and yeah okay i cannot check out new version but uh this this one is not full list i, I have truncated because i want to rebuild just part of them then i have a list of results like this when yeah, this is like a habit of my colleague to modify in the name of log to see which which one failed and which one passed actually uh, 
we can see the Hebrews packages are failing for some reason, and I didn't have time to look on it why. Again. <laughs> So this and the, here is the list or the, the, the list of packages which are compiled. OK, I guess I have run it out of time. I can show more for sure. But uh, the last session of this day is upcoming and I would like to to hear some free discussion. So all my Mike's was released already during the day, so you can reconnect to uh, to the session with your mic uh, turned on, and you can discuss pretty much everything. I would be happy to answer your question about Nemo uh, if you have some, and I can show you something more, or we can we can maybe debug something 